President Obama has a lot of explaining to do with the national debt exploding since he took office. Take a look at this chart showing the amount of debt increasing. Almost $50,000 every second ticks away on the clock. Liberal economist Paul Krugman of Princeton University and the New York Times is, of course, out with a new column to provide ideological cover for the president's profligate ways, arguing that, quote, debt doesn't matter and we should spend more, not less. Joining me now is Professor Krugman's arch nemesis and free market economist Professor Robert Murphy. Bob, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. I'm, I'm, Glad to be here, Judge. I'm not going to ask you to characterize the absurd views of your opponent, but what kind of sense does it make to say debt doesn't matter because we owe the money to ourselves? It's 15 trillion under the law; it has to be paid back. Right. Well, this is just another example where the average person thinks about this intuitively the right way, and the PhD economists come in and overthink it and get the wrong answer. So. What Krugman has in mind, he's thinking, look at our grandkids 100 years from now, if the government taxes some of them to pay off the bonds that other of our grandkids hold, that doesn't make the generation poor or richer, right? Because it's just a wash. But what he's overlooking is that our grandkids who happen to hold those treasury bonds, they didn't get them for free. They would have had to have paid the government beforehand to get those. They have to lend money to the government to get those treasury bonds. So when you think it through properly and do the accounting right, it really is the case that the deficits we run today allow our generation to live at the expense of unborn future generations who are going to be saddled with this humongous debt. A Congressman Ron Paul says that if he becomes president and can develop the view amongst the Congress to agree with him, he'll cut roughly a trillion dollars in spending in the first year, roughly forcing the government to live within its means, roughly not borrowing any money at all to operate the federal government. How would the government not borrowing another trillion every year actually help employment and help prosperity? Well, I think the best way to think about it is just to realize that when the government spends money, it's not just a flow of dollar bills around. It means real resources are getting redirected into politically determined ends. So if the government has to slash its spending, that frees up real resources meaning that private entrepreneurs are the ones directing workers and other resources, not basically politicians. And so that's, if you think that the private sector is the one that should be directing resources, that's really the source of the improvement and why the economy would do better with lower government spending. Can the government operate on just what it takes in if it does just what the Constitution authorizes it to do? Oh, yeah, I think there's, there's plenty of scope. I mean, I've written articles and so have other people showing if the government just slashed all sorts of things, there's all things you can cut down where you could easily live within its means. I mean, the, the government takes in far more revenue now than it did even in the, the first term of the Bush administration back when lots of people, including Paul Krugman, were worried about him spending too much and, and you know, not worrying about or not taking care of future generations with the big deficits. So, I mean, the idea that the government right now is is you know, really hurting because it's not getting enough revenue and it's starving the poor little government. I mean, that's just crazy. Got it. Bob Murphy, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Judge.